Angela Yee is Al Shalomay was popping. Peace to the planet. It's Friday. Yes, it's Friday. The weekend is here, damn it. It's definitely Friday, and I'm going to act like it's a Friday, okay? What's that mean? Don't talk to me about nothing if it doesn't bring me joy. Don't disturb my peace today. Well, what things bring you joy? We've had a lot. We've we've had you come in talking about the Milky Way and the black hole this morning. What else were you talking about? I was not talking about that. I was talking about space, and I was talking about Elon Musk and the fact that Elon Musk uh, and SpaceX launched four astronauts toward the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. And I said, Elon Musk is going to destroy the world. I don't know why I said that. That's how I felt this morning when I walked in. Okay. I have no idea why I said that. That's just how I Sheesh. felt. I saw that headline. I said, Elon Musk is going to destroy the world. And Dramo said, why? And I said, because he's poking around in places and he don't need to be poking around in like space. If they wanted us there, we would be there. And then we had a whole conversation about how we don't think that uh, America or anybody's ever been to the moon. Mm-hmm. Not not on this planet. But that's a whole okay. other discussion. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. What a conversation to have in the morning, but hey, you don't man. want that heavy. Bring me joy. Okay. I, when I came into work this morning, I was listening to a vet, Michelle, I'm not feeling you. I'm what is that not noise? Feeling you. I don't know. What is it? It sounds like an echo, right? It's coming from you. Is it? Yes, yes. fool. I'm tired of your distractions, okay? Can you hear that now? Yes. Ti- Does that sound better? Yes. yes. I okay. came in listening to Yvette Michelle, I'm not feeling you. Chris mm-hmm. Brown, back to sleep. T.I., whatever you like. Uh, I was re-listening to uh, 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 a chapter of Cass by um, Elizabeth Wilkerson. So, yes, I want nothing but joy, even mm-hmm. though, you know, Cass is slightly heavy, but still. I want nothing but joy this morning. Okay, all right. Make well, me I'm, happy. All right. Well, I'm not in the studio, so I'm sure dramas could take care of that. But Moneybag Yo will be joining us this morning. Okay. You know I love Memphis rap. Drop one of the clues bombs for Memphis rap. I'm on record. It's telling y'all that the best rappers in the game come from Memphis right now. Whether it's That's Moneybag right. Yo, whether it's Pooh Shiesty, whether it's Big 30, Key Glock, Big Ska, okay, Forever Gotti, all mm-hmm. right? So I'm happy Money Bag Yo is here. He's got a new album out today, too, right? That's right. He has a new album out a today. Gangsta's so Pain. With him. Yep, Gangsta's Pain. And the album is hard, too. I, I've been listening to the album for the last couple of days. So we're going to kick it with Money Bag Yo. It's riding. And we got front page news coming up. What are we talking about in front page news, Charlemagne? Nigga, I don't know. Me neither. We're going to get, gonna get to it next. All right, so don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. All right. Now, they're still talking, of course, the vaccine and how well the vaccine is for you. I don't want heavy news. Keep that in mind. No, no, no. None of us do. (laughs) Now, they're asking, since you're vaccinated, what does that mean? Nothing. Am I allowed to go outside? What about the surfaces? Can I uh, eat indoors? Well, here's some audio of the doctor saying what they believe. What doctor? You can't pronounce his name. That's why you just said the doctor. (laughs) Sanjay Gupta. Sanjay Gupta. Okay. That's what I said. No, it's not. You said Sanjay. Oh, Sanjay Gupta, go ahead. I think that the vast majority of viral transmission is not happening outside. In fact, we we put together some of the numbers. Overall, if you look at new cases of people becoming infected, fewer than 10% are happening outdoors. I'd say for the most part, you don't need to wear a mask outdoors. There's countries around the world like Israel that says you no longer need to do that. I think you just got to use common sense here. I mean, the virus is contagious. It doesn't like to be outdoors. It doesn't like to be in the sunlight. But if you are closely clustered together, you may consider that then if you're going to be in that sort of situation. Now, let the record show they've been told us that, you know, uh, if you're outside, it decreases the um, chance of getting chance of transmissions. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, But I remember somebody saying the sun kills it. And they said that person was stupid. I forgot who said that. It might have been. What's the guy's name? He used to be Donald president. Trump. Yeah, it might have been him. Trump. I don't remember if it was him exactly, but I do yeah, remember but, hearing something like that. But it just tells me they have no idea what they're talking we about. We know they this already. They go back and mm-hmm. forth and left and right and wear masks, don't wear a mask, outdoors, non-outdoors. Now, they also talk about transmission through tr- uh, surfaces. 
In the beginning, I think there was a lot of caution. We don't, don't know how this transmits uh, fully. Now we know it does not seem to transmit very well on surfaces. If you are living in a household and somebody has known COVID in that household, probably still a, a good idea to be disinfecting surfaces. But other than that, really not, not much uh, utility is what the CDC is saying. Basically what he's saying is get your ass out in these streets this summer, okay? We got things yeah. to do. That's basically what he's saying. And we knew that already too. We knew that about the surfaces. That's just, they're regurgitating old news. Yeah, but that's the, the crazy thing, because obviously they have no clue what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like, none no, none whatsoever. Why they just keep re repeating the same thing over and over in different ways. But mm -hmm. I, was, I would still wear my mask outside. I'm not playing with y'all. And I'm still wiping the surfaces down, too. Now, also, they're saying that sleeping less than six hours a night in midlife raises risk of dementia by 30%. So they're mm -hmm. saying if you're trying to get a buy on only six hours or less of sleep, it could affect you long term and, and set up you for uh, setting you up for brain failure. So, so they're saying so basically a lack of sleep is not good. Correct. So what else do you want to tell us this morning? Drink more water? <laughs> they're also saying <laughs> drink, you want drink more us? water, have a lot of sex, oh, be God. happy and smile. <laughs> exactly. They say if you do all those things, you can live a long lifetime. Give praises to God. Hey, don't forget to breathe this morning, guys. You Make know sure what I mean? Floss. Yeah, floss, brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. All right. Well, I'm just filling you out. I mean, it's not what I do. Let me just give you some updates, man. These are all right? updates. You're giving us basic <laughs> life advice we learned in kindergarten. <laughs> Jesus. Anything else? Um, brush your teeth every day if you don't oh, want cavities. Oh, man. All right, and that is your front page news. All Very right. informative. That was, I, I could have went a million different places. Hey. You said you don't want you want to be happy. Hey, don't forget, breakfast is also the most important meal of the day. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just like Breakfast Club is the most important radio show of the day. All right, guys and gals out there listening, thank so you. They say. All right, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, call us up right now. Phone lines are wide open. 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. I'm dialing. I'm dialing. Hey, what you doing, man? I'm dialing. I'm calling call you. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. <laughs> Hello, who's this? This is Mike calling from D.C. Mike, what's up? Get it off your chest, bro. Man, I'm just calling. I want to, man, say I'm a big fan of you guys. And I just wanted to give all the Muslims a shout out celebrating Ramadan right now. I just want to say Ramadan Mubarak to all the Muslims out there. Ramadan Mubarak to all the Muslims out there. Assalamu alaikum to all the brothers and sisters out there. I think I'm out the time, brother. You take it easy. Yes, sir. All righty, brother. That's what I like. Positive energy. I don't want nothing but positive energy this morning. Make me happy. Hello, who's this? Tell me, yo, this is Vince from the BX. What's up? Something from something from the BX. What's happening? I'd like to give a shout out to all the service members who've been a part of the COVID mission from day one. Got you. We don't get that much of uh, recognition. And we still out here serving our city. So I just want to give a shout out to my fellow service members. And I also want to shed light on the fact that within the military, there's a lot of undertone racism that's going on. And the fact that when us uh, service members of color speak about it, especially when it comes to like police brutality. We just speak it on the subject, but a lot of the white service members would assume that, oh, the police bashing and all that. I'm like, nah, that isn't the case. We just shed a light on what you guys choose to ignore and what you guys choose to uh, put a band-aid over. But it is, there is a tremendous amount of racism within the military. And I feel like the younger generation is speaking up on it. And a lot of them just be feeling a little uncomfortable. But I'm like, yo, you, you, this is what's going on. You can't hide it. Word. Well, that's why we need people like you uh, bringing it to light, brother. Keep speaking on it. All right. Uh, blessings to both of you guys. And peace to our Angela. Peace, King. All right, man. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Let's go! This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're man or black. Say it with your chest. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. So if you got something on your mind, let it out. Hello, who's this? Hi, this is CC. Hey, CC, get it off your chest. Okay, so me and my baby daddy just broke up like a month ago, and he got a new chick. And our baby is five months old, and her baby is nine months. So they wanted us to meet together and meet up. And I told him, well, my baby just got over a cold, you know, you don't know that. But, you know, am I wrong for asking for a COVID test for both of them to come to her? No, you're not wrong. Hell no. Why would you think you'd be wrong? 
Unless you're going to meet him outside with mask on. No, like, that's just too much. And I told him, like, you know, keep it out for a cold. Like, why is you getting upset? So he got upset, called his whole family and everything. And everybody just thinks, Oh, she's a dumb baby mama. Why would you go do that? Is that the third? He's been going for a month out of my life. I don't know what he's been doing. Man, you look. Let, let me ask you a question. If y'all was still having sex and you know that he might have been cheating on you, you'd probably make him wear a condom, right? Yes. All right, then. So make him get a goddamn COVID test. Same rules apply. Absolutely. I think oh. that made sense. It did. I got what you're saying. Well, thank you, mama. Hello, who's this? This is Tanya from Indianapolis. Hey, Tanya. Indiana. Get it off your chest. My whole thing, I want to say how proud I am of Charlemagne because I really used to couldn't stand him. And you <laughs> look at God. God has truly evolved. Look at God. You. Well, and thank you. I just want to say thank you for that. And also, if it wasn't for Tom Joyner going off the show, I would never listen to you guys full time because I cannot stand Ricky Smiley's voice. <laughs> that, that show just irks me. Well, right. I'm, I'm glad that we're here for you, okay? Salute to the yes, OG you uh, you guys, Tom, Tom Joyner. You guys, for me to be the age that I am, you guys do a wonderful job. How, How old, old are you? You sound like you're 25. How old are you? Oh, you, I wish. I'm 52. Just turned 52. Oh, please. Wow. We right well, behind you. Day. We right behind <laughs> you. <laughs> well, you're still babies compared to me, but I just want to say... <laughs> nah, you ain't 50. I'm so proud of you, Charlamagne. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate you. That's actually the best compliment somebody can give me at this point in my life when they say, uh, I've, I, I've seen your growth. I've seen yeah, your evolution. I, I do. I see your growth, and I thank God for it. Because I used to couldn't stand you. That I couldn't stand myself. That was one of the reasons why I wouldn't listen to y'all so full time. Well, thank you so much, Thank mama. you. I appreciate that. Your wife, your wife is a lucky woman. No, she's not. You, yes, she you, you haven't thank seen you. his growth. <laughs> thank you very much. He really ain't got no growth. Thank you very much, man. All right, man. You have a good one. You guys have a beautiful weekend. You have a great weekend. And I'm the blessed one having my wife, okay? She's not lucky for me. I'm blessed to have her. Uh-huh. With no growth. All right. That is Get It Off Your Chest. 800-585-1051. When we come back, we're going to send a rest in peace to another fallen soldier, rapper that passed away. We'll get into it next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Angela Yee's not here. Angela Yee's not here, so I'm going to try to do this Rumor Report. And I told you it's Friday, so nothing heavy, okay? Keep it well, light. that's not going to happen. Shock G. You know Shock G from uh, Digital Underground and, and the Humpty Dance? You know the Humpty Dance. Play the Humpty Dance. Of course. Of course. Just don't faze me. I'm still getting in the and I even got my own dance. Right, so that's the Humpty Dance. How you ain't play the best part, man? My nose is big like a pickle. That's the best part. Why well, is that the best part? Because I used to have a big nose growing up, so that gave me self-esteem when oh I was my younger. Goodness. <laughs> and, of course, he was in, on Tupac's single as well. I get around. Now you can tell from my everyday fits. I ain't rich, so see, so this is with them tricks. I'm just another black man. Caught up in mix. All right. Well, Shock G has passed away at the age of 57. He was found uh, deceased in his hotel room in Tampa. That's horrible. They don't know why. They're not saying what happened there. Of course, they have to do an autopsy report and go from there. So rest in peace to Shock G and condolences to his family. That's horrible. 57 is way too young. You know what way I'm saying? Way too young. When I look at the... When you see all these, you know, 80-something still out here thriving and still mm-hmm. out here, you know, moving and grooving, 57 is way, 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 way too young to pass. Absolutely. And when you're 40-something, like I am, I'm 42. So yeah. 57, it's not right, right around the corner, but it is. It's like that's too young to go. But rest in peace to Shock G. Yeah, I agree. And also, Wendy Williams. You know, Wendy Williams was going to be on The Real Housewives of a Miami I don't know if she was going to be a housewife or if she was going to be a friend. Go but ahead, girl. Tell me more. Tell me she, more, girl. She talks about what it else? with Andy Cohen. Oh, I lost interest in Miami. But here's the thing. My family is all consuming. So I don't even have time to be yeah. fond of. Okay. Why would Wendy want to be on Real Housewives of Miami? You got a daytime talk show. You, you making money doing all these other things. Why would you want to be on the Real Housewives of Miami? Um, I don't know. I really don't know. She talks about a story about Larsa Pippen was supposed to pick her up. You know, she was on Housewives of Miami and, you know, they were supposed to do dinner and they stood up and she just decided, you know what? She does not want to tape for Housewives of Miami. I'm with you. I don't I don't see where they would fit in or how they would do that. But 
I guess she changed her mind. Rest in peace, Shock G. Also, Kalani. Did you know Kalani came out and said that she is a lesbian? Well, it's f-ing true. I am gay, g- gay, gay, gay. But now my thing is, right, like when I want to have these like heart to heart to my family and my friends and I'm like, guys, <laughs> I finally know that I'm a, that I'm gay. Like I'm gay, gay. And they're like, we know. You really wanted to f-ing know. The f-ing closet was glass. Rest in peace, Shock G. What are you supposed to say when somebody tells you that? What do you say? Congratulations? Like, okay. Yeah, congratulations. She came out. She knows that she's gay. So you say congratulations. She always knew she was gay. And by the way, it's none of our business. If she wants to express it because she wants to inspire other people, great. But uh, I would like everybody out there, um, you don't have to tell everybody what your sexuality is. It's not about even being in the closet. It's just that it ain't nobody's damn business. But if it makes you feel good and inspires other people to do it, cool. You tell them, girl. I just don't and know what you expect us to say when you tell us that. Like, and, what, is and the, last, what is the proper response when somebody uh, comes out the club? Let me call David Johns and ask him what's the proper response. I don't know if congratulations <laughs> is the proper response. Aren't you supposed you to get say congratulations? A, or, do you, you get know, him a gift? Because, you know, you, you get you gifts. Should, you should. You get push gifts and, mm. you know, birth gifts. You give him a gift. What do you do? And what kind of gift do you give him? I don't know. I'm going to call David Johns and ask him. Okay. And lastly, Dr. Dre is ruled a single man by the court. So he is single. He has a net worth of $800 million. So he can get out and do whatever he wants to do because they marked him single. Um, I remember when Eminem said on a record, um, this whole time I've been lying my ass off. Me and Dre been out the closet effing with hats off. And nobody told them congratulations. And that is your rumor report. You when we come that? back, no, I don't remember that. Um, what I song it, was I, that? Uh, my dad's gone crazy. I think that's what the song was. Eminem. Yep. Mm, all awesome. right. Well, I don't. I, I don't make these things up. Yes, you do. No, I don't. This is all a right. fact. Google it. It's a when we come back, and I don't uh, even listen to Eminem like that, and I know that line. We got front page news, and also Money Bag Yo will be joining us next hour. Money Bag Yo has an album that's out against today. his pain. So we're gonna kick it with Money Bag Yo. So don't go anywhere. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Our Audible pick of the day is Half Light, a fantastic Atlanta-based story about sisterhood and love from best-selling author Tyeri Jones. Your first 30 days of Audible Plus are free. Sign up at audible.com slash breakfast club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, Charlemagne walked in this morning. I seen that he was a little upset. And now I'm I was not upset. Why. I walked in happy as hell. I walked Taco in. Taco Bell. Because I was singing uh, Yvette Michelle. I was singing Chris Brown back to mm-hmm. sleep. And I don't eat no damn Taco Bell. So don't right. lie on me. Taco Bell has meatless options now. And the fact that Charlemagne can't get his meat from Taco Bell made him very upset this morning. Taco that's, Bell is that, right now trying so silly. Beyond Meat uh, Tacos that's and good. Plant-Based Tacos. That's so. amazing. Drop on the clues bombs for Taco Bell for having a... Plant-based food. I used to work at Taco Bell. I worked at Taco Bell for two weeks when my sister was a manager there. She fired me. She fired me after two weeks of working there. How your sister fire you? Well, I mean, I didn't really want to be there, so it wasn't really a job I used to take serious. And then I used to come in there, and I used to just, like, when, when they used to put me on taco duty, and you have to make the tacos, I'd be making the t- soft tacos, but eating them at the same time, mm-hmm. coming in when I wanted to. So, yeah, I lasted two weeks at Taco Bell. I used to have to All wear right. that damn purple shirt with them dickies. <laughs> Goodness. All right. Now, Chauvin, uh, like Charlemagne said, you know him from the George Floyd trial. Well, I shouldn't say the George Floyd trial. You know him from murdering George Floyd. He was found guilty. He is, like you said, on suicide watch. So they have him on suicide watch to make sure he does not kill himself and has to serve out his full sentence. Well, actually, yeah, I said I I hope he doesn't kill himself because, you know, I want him to, you know, get sentenced and have to deal with the consequences of his actions. But I mean, I do think there's an over under on him uh, killing himself. So I'm glad he's on suicide watch so he doesn't Mm -hmm. do that. Because he looks like the type. His wife left him right before the, I mean, right after the situation happened. What do you got to live for? Right. Now, Makaya is the young girl who was getting into an altercation at her house. She called the police and said some girls or women were trying to jump her. The police pulled up and she had a knife and was, uh, I guess, on the way to maybe cut or hurt another person. The cop hopped out and shot her. Now, they're saying the cop who shot Makaya was military trained marksman. So he was a marksman, a military trained marksman. So he definitely could have shot her in the leg or something. But that's not the way police officers are trained. That's not the way that they're trained. They are trained to shoot to kill, not to injure. And they're trained to shoot at the biggest, you know, part of your body that they can aim at, which is usually the chest area. So, you know, it's it's the biggest target. So being that he was a marksman, he'd be trained a little different, though, right? Uh, but usually when they say marksmen, it's usually long guns. It's usually rifles. It's usually mm. things like that, not necessarily your um, handguns. 
Well, the neighbor came out, and the neighbor's name is Donovan Brinson, and this is what he said about the shooting. It shows. He, he literally got out of his vehicle and had seconds to respond. So the video doesn't lie. I mean, there was an altercation. He responded. He reacted with what he thought was his best judgment. Um, whether that means he tried and go for the leg, which I don't think he had time to take aim and go for a leg, to be honest. So he did what he thought was best. All right. Now, the mom also spoke out, and this is what the mom said. I've always had sympathy for the Brianna Taylor story and her family. And now I know what it feels like to lose a child. I want the killing in the world to stop. And that's what Micaiah would want. Micaiah was peaceful. She was loving. She wanted everybody to get along. She was a Christian. I, I stand on the fact that I think it was excessive, and I do not think that young girl should be dead today. Even if this is one that's legally justified, uh, sadly, it doesn't mean it's right. Because police have shown us over and over that when it comes to black people, the only way they deal with us is fatal force. It's just way too many examples of police officers, you know, uh, being threatened, themselves being threatened, you know, with knives from white folks and not responding in that way. I've heard social workers say they've broken up knife fights. I refuse to believe that was the only way to handle that situation is by shooting her four times. Yeah, I, I don't agree with you on this one. I mean, a cop got a call that said that, you know, these women were jumping somebody. They hop out the car and see a woman you know, going at another woman with a knife. Yeah, maybe if they would have shot her in the foot, who's to say or shot her in the leg? Who's to say that she still couldn't stab the young girl? So you don't think four no. times was excessive? No, wow. I, I honestly wow. don't. Wow. And the reason I don't, and the reason I don't think that is because everybody sees one side. But now think about the other side. Think about that was your daughter about to get stabbed. You want them to dead. We keep and, saying and, that we, and we stop we, the person we, from doing it. We keep saying that, but, but that's the I'm, truth. No, I'm a father. That's my daughter. I'm not. I'm, a a, father I'm well. not a police officer who's there to protect and serve. They are there everyone. to protect and serve. So, uh, they are we, there. We, we keep saying that it's a different. It's different when I'm a father and a daughter, and I still don't know if I would shoot a a, a, a girl four times. Yeah, but like, like no, you, that's excessive. You, you can use deadly force when somebody else is in harm, and in that situation, that Henry, girl was in harm. It police officers, was. police officers use deadly force with us all the time. That doesn't even, mean it. Even, that doesn't make even, it right. Even when nobody, even when nobody is uh, in in danger, that's how and they that, that's how they approach us all the time. Fatal force cannot be the only option when it comes to dealing with black people. I it, can, there's a million videos you can see of black people complying. Black people laying on the ground in handcuffs. Black people like in a situation like Michaela Bryant. Uh, black, like the uh, Latino boy from last week in Chicago. It's fatal force every single right. time. There's got to be another that. way to deal with us. You can it say that a million and one times, but every case is different. And in this case, mm -mm. if I pull up to a scene and see a girl chasing mm -mm. another girl about to stab a girl, my job as a police officer is to make sure that girl does not get killed. Absolutely. And, 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 and the, law allows me, times. the law allows me to stop that sh that that killing or that stabbing once by again, any means necessary. Once again, that's what that law again, allows me to do. Once again, and on both sides, if my daughter was about to get stabbed, I would want that person taken daughter, down, yes. shot, or anything by any means necessary. And that's what a cop's job is to do—to protect and to serve. And, and in they that don't case, do that. That cop protected that young girl. Now we could talk about every case and talk about well, what about this case? What about that case? But you can't. You you, you got to talk case by case. Well, let me ask you a question. All those other cases might have been wrong, but in this case. That cop made a split decision to say, you know what, I'm saving this girl's life. You, do, you to, really, to do you really think that cop cared about that girl in the pink? Because if he cared about that girl in the pink, why would you shoot four times? She was right there. She could have got hit too. You really think he cared about that girl in the pink that much? If he cared so much, why didn't he look, why didn't he look sad after it was over? Why did he say blue lives matter after it was over? If he was that, if he was such a good cop, like you said, he was just there to save lives. Why did, why was there no remorse? We why? can move the goalposts on every time. I'm we not, talk I'm about just asking story. a question. We are. But now it's like, mm -hmm. did he shoot right or shoot wrong? Okay. Well, no. if he shot right, then how come he looked sad after? Well, how come he, after he didn't tie his shoes? Like we can move the goalposts and, and, in every situation, in every and, situation. And, but in that situation, that cop, possibly save that girl's life I'm, no he did save her life but once again just, be, just because something is legally justified doesn't mean it's right and i'm not saying that he shouldn't have you just intervened. said he saved the girl's life what are you talking about you just said he saved the he possibly saved that girl's life yo abs absolutely but once he again did. just because something is legally justified doesn't mean that it's right just because he said he could he could have intervened without killing that girl i truly believe that he could have intervened I, I, without killing that young lady I mean, he could have intervened and protected that woman without killing that young lady. I watched a video. Been. I watched a video of a white man getting stabbed in the neck. See, we're a talking cop. about another case. No, we're talking about another case. Yo, it's common sense. White it's cop, not. A, a cop gets stabbed in the neck by a white man. 
chased, the, chased the white guy with a gun, then put his gun away and then pulled out his taser to tase the kid. That's another case, right? And he had time. Mm-hmm. He got stabbed. That guy didn't have that much time. He, that guy didn't have time to put his gun away and then take out a taser. By that time, that other girl probably would have got stabbed and been if, dead. If, if you don't think that they deal with us differently than they do everybody of, else. Of course they do. But the, each case is differently. And this case is a different case. Wow. That case is not the same show, as the one that show, you're talking show about. Show me a case where they haven't used fatal force. All right. Well, that is your front page news. Now, when we come back, Moneybag Yo will be joining us. We'll kick it with Moneybag Yo. He has an album out right now. And we'll talk to him when we come back. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, sir. Moneybag Yo. Yo, what up? Well, congratulations. Album's out today. A Gangsta's Pain. Hard. Right. How you feeling? How you, fe- how you feeling, first of all? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling blessed. Now, you said on Change the Subject, you tell everybody you're feeling good, even if you're not now. Exactly. What you going to do? <laughs> nobody want to really know, right? Yeah. Like, what you going to do? I don't know. Say a prayer or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> say a prayer. Pray for me anyway. They say the album of the year. Yeah, this is what I feel like. The album is hard. What is a gangster's pain? What does that What does that mean to you when you, you see them two words? I feel like just what I'm going through right now, like in, in my personal life, in my real life, and it's like I'm letting the world know, like, you ain't the only one going through something. Like, mm-hmm. just because we're in this situation, we go through stuff, too. We experience stuff, too. You feel what I'm saying? So, and then, like, I did a gangster's pain because, like, I, I've been giving my fans the gangster music, the, my core fans. But then I come with the pain when I say that it's like the mail the vibes. And I say, like, Dirk, Polo, G, like, all that type, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. in that direction. So, it's yeah, really a lot what of I trust did. issues. I, it seemed like it was... You know, even in the one song, I don't trust I don't trust bitches, I don't no trust nobody. nobody. <laughs> then I listen to the album, you talk about if 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 I know if I know your op for for longer than I know you, I don't trust like you don't trust nobody. <laughs> you got that, trust issues there? Yeah, I got trust issues because I just seen the worst and I've been through the worst, so it just really it hit me like that. Let me ask you this: I saw you tweet the other day that you can't believe you get one hundred and twenty-five thousand a show. Yeah, that's correct. Do you remember the first amount of money you ever got for a show? Twenty-five hundred. That's still not bad, by the way, for your first time getting paid. Yeah, but that was my first job. Compared to where you at now. (laughs) That was my first job, Mm -hmm. though. 2500 That promoter called you now. It was like, I was the first one to book you. Can can you do it again for 2500 A DC promoter. I seen a DC promoter. (laughs) uh, He booked me for something like, what, about five, ten thousand 10000 in DC. And he was like, bro, like you changed my life. I made 200 Damn. He made 200 at Bliss. He was like, I'm trying to get you. And I said, well, you know it's a different man. Like, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, do, well, do you think about the promoter when you're charging them 125 I mean, do they think about it? Right, that guy made $200,000. <laughs> <laughs> they got to think about but it. But that makes too, somebody like, love you for life, too. When a promoter actually makes money, that makes exactly. them want to continue to work with you. So you don't want to go crazy. And it spread the word because promoters talk to promoters and mm-hmm. it just go like that. So. You also can't yeah. undercharge, though, because that spreads, too. They be exactly. like, you pay how much? Exactly. Like, you try to charge him this, and then you charge him that. They're going to be like, damn, what you got it for this? Like, call it confusion. But you charge so differently for different markets, though. Like if it, if Yeah, different markets. Like, right. L.A., of course. Like, stuff like that, you know you got to go down a little bit for L.A. But Atlanta, you call it tell them out. Yeah, it's so you, you still surprised by a lot of your success? Yeah. Like, I just did Jimmy Fallon. Like, all mm-hmm. that type of stuff. Like, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Now, now you got you got a song on the album uh, called Wakisha. Am I pronouncing it right? Wakisha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's, it's, it sounds like a love song about lean, but it sounds like you sh- struggling with putting the cup down too. Like, cause it be it like a love that song we, about lean. But it's, but I also made it like too like about a real life situation because like you would think I'm talking to a female if you mm-hmm. heard it. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, but it's the same thing. Like, well, whatever you're doing, it, like you say you through with this, but you're not. You're gonna end up relapsing, going back, not just with drugs, like with women and whatever you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So you I just up put and it get like right this. back together. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like you need that Waukesha to, to to keep your your lyrics going and to keep your records big? Like, is it one of those things that I feel like my my mind most definitely stronger than that, but. Like, some people do need motivation. Like, you feel what I'm saying? So I feel like when I'm in the studio, that is my motivation. Smoking and, you know what I'm saying, just vibing. What's the yeah. longest you've gone without doing any lean or anything? Like a year. I went a year. Mm-hmm. You know, because I used to be real fat. Like, so I, when I was in the gym losing weight, trying to get it down, like, I had stopped when cold turkey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did that affect you? I mean, it affected me the worst for, like, a week, but then I shook it. Now, you said the worst. It was shakes? Was it... It just was like, you got to have it, like, damn, like, you just be doing shit like that you don't normally do, like, it's just crazy, like, yeah. Does it concern you? Nah. Like, 
that something bad could happen, you don't be thinking like maybe I need to just figure out. No, nah, not really. It ain't, th- ain't took over me like that now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How's being around Gotti? I've never seen Gotti smoke yeah, he don't drink, drink nothing. He don't drink nothing. nothing. He just, he his own man. Like, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Money Mac had the face like, man, he a party pooper, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, Gotti will have that bottle in front of him, but he ain't gonna touch it. No, nah, Big Bray in his own line. Like, I, I had got him out of that bottle one time for my birthday, <laughs> let him drink some liquor and stuff, like, turn over like that. Like, you gotta take a shot for him. He probably threw it he behind his back. He it right back yeah. out. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, you also had the song If Pain Was a Person in. Um, Love that record. That has the sample. Sure. You know, I like it because that's like a. The record for the ladies too. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So you, uh, it bothers you when the blogs just put up anything. It affects home. Yeah, cause they just you don't even know what you talking about. Then you got people in the world that really believe this stuff. Like people be like be confusing me, cause like, like when I go back to Memphis and stuff like that, they will ask me about stuff like, bro, did this really? I'm like, come on, like some stuff is just like, come on, bro, like for real, like. So it just be like, like what? Like what are some things that were ridiculous that people just ask like, about? Some crazy, like the, what's what, like everything that's really been on the internet. The blogs, like really ninety percent of it, eighty five percent of it, just cap. Like really, like how they mm-hmm. be trying to paint the picture. Like it ain't really that. Cause it's true. If you tweet cool. something or if I tweet something, people think y'all subbing each other. Exactly. But it could like be... we don't need to be. We be right there with each other. Like she they just, just broke up. It's over. Yeah, it's over. They <laughs> broke up. Like, <laughs> like chill, I'm just, I'm bro. Like, I love the way you flip the two records. Um, hate it here and love it here. That's another. Situation like almost like the uh, Waikiki situation, but mm-hmm. you know, like when you get with a person, start off good, and then you love her, then you hated her, <laughs> then you hated her, and you love her. Like so. I was going to ask you, how did your lady feel about hated her? She like me being creative. I'm an artist. She understand mm-hmm. what I'm doing at the same time, so mm-hmm. she ain't gonna get away in it. Like when she 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 liked it, them songs like them type of songs like don't know and all them type of songs. Mm-hmm. Before she even met me, mm-hmm. right. so you know what I'm saying. So she accepted. So did you write like, Love I It Here? I hate it here sometimes, too. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, did, you, did you write that record that just just in case she was mad about Hate It Here? Let me it write Love like, It Here. Then close <laughs> and then some situations, like, you speak on what you have been through, what you saw, what you saw others go through, so mm-hmm. she understand it. And yeah, I see you hooked up with Pharrell. For real, my man. How was that? How was that, how did that happen? How was that combo? Uh, man, I'm thinking I'm through with the album. I'm thinking I'm wrapping it up. He reached out to my people. And he was like, man, how like, bad finna finish the album without for real on it? So I, I need him in Miami two days. I went down there. We did two And you never records. met him before that? Never met, yeah, That's never dope. met him before that. Did you go to his new hotel? Nah. He just opened that hotel in Miami. It looked crazy. And he too, had the hook and everything and everything ready. Yeah, he had the, yeah, it was like laid out like sketch. Like, I ain't understand it at first. I was like, it sounded a little weird at first, but he was like, this ain't it. As soon as you rap on it, it's just the bass, there's the hi hats. When, ra- when you rap on it, I'm going to go around it. This art. Was you shocked? He was, he was, I'm add colors. Like he used words like that, like colors, like stuff like this. Were, I like. Were right. you shocked? He was a fan of you. Yeah, like he told me, like I'm his favorite. I was like for real. He like your, your lingo, your accent. I just I love it. Like he like the chorus, even the chorus. He was like I think you should say this. You should say this. Like I like how you would say it. But I was like, man, you for real too. Like I want to hear you say it. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Sometimes for us, I like he a drug dealer. Like he just knows. Like he's from Virginia, so he knows all the drug dealers. But he sounds like he's in the game so much. Exactly. Yeah. All right, we got more with money back, yo. When we come back, don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with money back, yo, Charlemagne. I'm on record saying that Memphis has the best rappers out right now. I seen that. What what is it about this generation of Memphis rappers? Because to me, it's the lyrics and it's the lyrics, the lingo, and the accent. Yeah, it's just the swag, all that, like the drip, all that. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like like Memphis and Detroit that we got that little, we got that wave like Atlanta had at one point, just this straight. You know what I'm saying? So, but I feel like Memphis been having the talent there, like. People just weren't paying attention to that, though. Yeah, Detroit having a wave right now, too. Do you think Memphis could ever be known as a top hip-hop area like Atlanta? Or y'all don't have I enough unit? I, I got faith in it. Mm-hmm. I got faith. We don't have enough unit, but I feel like people like me, Gotti, Black Youngster, you know what I'm saying? We can make that happen. Pooh Shots, like, Big 30. Yep. Oh, so it's all, it's all love between, like, the Pooh Shots and Big 30? Oh, yeah, it's okay, all okay, love. Okay. Us, we family. We locked in. Cause see, I don't be knowing how Memphis moving because it be from North Memphis and this Memphis, and they some people yeah, don't mess with this. You still got some people like standing on it like this, that live like that, but they nine times out of ten they probably broke or something though, like, <laughs> like for real, like this how it be. You yeah. ain't got nothing else to do. That's what you're gonna be on. Instead of getting with a team that's winning and, and and figuring out how to get some money. For sure. Now you really a girlfriend's fan, or you just was rapping? I was rapping because like you think. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a girlfriend's fanatic. 
I ain't no fanatic on girlfriend, but it, <laughs> like at the same time, it's just like they were just using memes. It's just like me taking a negative and making it positive, bro. Mm -hmm. like, that's how I looked at it. Like, oh, y'all gonna play with me like this? All right, say this. Oh, they made that a meme first. Yeah, they trying to see me and <laughs> They try to see me and William. We twins and stuff like this. So I was just like, let's go. Oh, that was hard. Yeah. And now, I see you got Janae Aiko on the album, which I love. That's my favorite right there. So how did how did that collab happen? Did you reach out to her? And I just told God, you know, I told him like I got, <laughs> got to have this like I got to have her on here. Like this is all I listen to. Like when I'm trying to relax outside of rap, I listen to Summer Walk with Janae stuff like that. I got my own little playlist, like half for the next playlist I made for Apple. And it's just like from the, all the slow jams, old school, like Asla Brothers, like Marvin Gaye, just to keep you satisfied, like stuff like that. And the newest R and B. So now did you make a conscious decision to make the love radio type records? What you mean? Like the, the records like the Janae Aiko, the those like type of records. Which, which, like a, did you go in the studio and say, this is the kind of records I want to make? Because I like the street Yeah, nah, you know for I mean? sure. Most definitely. But you got to balance it. Mm -hmm. I feel like you got to balance it because like girls, like women is my biggest fan base too. They love me. So mm -hmm. I got to cater to them. You know what I'm saying? But it, like I told you, like that's why I feel like a gangster's pain. You got to mix it up. Just right. keep the whole thing balanced. So I, even with a girlfriend, the, the ladies still love you? Because, you know, back in the day, they used to say, if you got a girl, don't tell people. But then, people, like, girls be liking, like, when, when you got it, it's like they own you they more want you when more. you got a yeah. girl. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, Plus, if your girl is popping too, it just really elevates you. Stuff like that, yeah. Now, during the pandemic, how, how much did you lose during the pandemic? Because you are a I ain't lose none in the pandemic. All really. week long. I ain't lose nothing. Nothing at all. No, All the shows and How everything? much did you not gain? Are you talking about like yeah, How much did you <laughs> not get? Like <laughs> <laughs> how much did you not make? Uh, I'm, this this is we, the last show, we had a whole out. tour set up. We had a whole tour set up like so. Man, it took probably like two meals or something. What got what, what, two like about so probably like two meals or something. We missed out on it. Damn. It'll that was back. crazy, but then, like, you, it, it helped me at the same time because I made three of the biggest songs in my career. Like, Me versus Me said some time today I had to sit down and get in the pocket, like, oh, this is what they want for me. Like, when I did Me versus Me, I went in, like, I got to get them that old bag. So, you know, when I put it out and they ate on it like that, I said, oh, this is what we're doing. This is what we're going to go back. That's reset and sit down. Yeah, and just reset. Record. Exactly. Exactly. What'd exactly. you learn about yourself during the pandemic? Just go back to my craft. Just mm -hmm. go back to what I came in doing. Like, quit taking all these opinions, advices, and all that. Just, just make the music. What's the protocol for when you are traveling, right? And you're in a relationship? Cause I've been on the road with Envy, and mm -hmm. I seen how he got a he got a call before we go in the club. Got to check in, in right? Club. Damn right. <laughs> so what's I, your protocol? This uh, he on point. <laughs> <laughs> he on point. You got to do that, like just to keep the relationship healthy. Like it's a communication. It's key. Mm -hmm. Cause like when I'm talking about like the first like I ain't get it at first like I ain't get it at first like doing it cause I'm it's like you want you you want them to understand for you like you got mm -hmm. to understand what I'm doing right. you know what I'm saying but now nah, you got to check in but I'm, I'm heading in the club I'm leaving out now at John Live <laughs> you know what I'm saying Dude, you know what I'm saying FaceTime when you get back to the FaceTime room and I'm on the way to the you know what I'm yeah. saying you can't gotta, not answer the phone can't not answer the phone but if I don't answer the phone nine times out of ten you're gonna hear somebody around mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like what's going on where you at <laughs> but it's also safety too, though, especially everything that's going on, shootings and everything. Exactly, they be scared too. I ain't gonna lie. Now like she hate when I go to Memphis, like stuff like that. Do you do you hate when you go to Memphis? No, nah, not really, cause mm -hmm. you know this, I'm used to it. Yeah, but like, yeah, I don't be liking that. Even when you started the album, like the intro is basically kind of like painting a picture, letting you know, letting you hear how I go out there, like really, you get that feeling. You know, the, the song free promo. You said you don't you don't need a therapist. And on uh, Waukesha, you say the cup is your therapy. <laughs> so it must be people in your life telling you that you need therapy. You know, like, I don't know. People crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it must be people in your life saying, man, money back, you need to go to therapy. They crazy, man. I just be doing me. I just be in my own world. I just be vibing, bro. Have they told? Has anybody told you that, though? Yeah, because it's just be like, just on a personal tip. Mm -hmm. Just on a personal tip. Yeah, but I feel like I don't need it. Or like, be cool. So people believe you're bipolar? Yeah. I feel, like, I feel like a woman told you that and you wrote a song about it. No, it oh, bipolar Virgo. They said that before, but it's like, like a couple people said it, then it just clicked to me. Like, damn, I, I checked myself. I don't feel like you a man so you can check yourself. Like, I had to check myself one day. Like, damn, I, I was like this, and then I just got like that right there, like that quick. Damn, I might be bipolar. Might you be. think, so you honestly <laughs> think that, like, no, seriously, do you think medically, like, for real, you might be bipolar or something? I that? feel, I get, I don't, I feel like it, bro, like, I feel like I can be like this one minute, then I can be like this, like, I can be cool, then it, you say the wrong thing, I go that way, like, 
don't know. You're using a lot of language on the album, though. You, it's called Gangsta's Pain. You say you traumatized. Yeah. You, but I feel like you got to be real, bro. You got to let the EFO know who you is. Mm -hmm. Like, people accept you more because there's somebody else that's like me, too, across the world. Yeah. You feel me? Like, like, so I don't want to hold it in. Like, I ain't, I'm just perfect. Like, I ain't perfect. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Oh, no, I f with therapy. I go to therapy once a week. Oh, uh, for real? Yeah, that's I go to heaven. Show. What about COVID? Do you think you got it during this time? Nah. You don't feel like it? So Hey, don't say that after we done shook hands. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he could have got it last year. I'm not talking about right now. Yeah, I know, man. What the hell? Because you know some people felt like at one point they were feeling real under the weather. I feel like before they said it was COVID, like mm -hmm. I, before they said it was COVID, like I had the no tasting, no smelling oh, symptoms like, like January. Oh, January. Like, January. This is before they even said it. I'm on a tour bus. It's me and my staff like, are with me too like we just I, everybody on the bus sick sweating can't taste can't smell i'm like what's going on this before they even said it was COVID. oh that was definitely y'all definitely had on it on the tour bus sick yeah. on our way back to memphis i was like Damn, that might have saved you from getting it later though because you yeah. know you might have had the antibodies after that oh uh, yeah yeah you can't get it after you had it first well, one time right? after a certain amount of okay. time they say you can't yeah, okay, yeah. Bet. now don't move we got more with money back yo when we come back his album is out right now it's the breakfast club good morning Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Money Bag Yo, Charlemagne. On, on the song Gangsta's Pain, you say you just got a call that made your heart drop. So when, when, when the last time you, you got a call that made your heart drop? The ELO situation, like my brother, like, you know what I'm saying? Super Bowl night. Got mm. that call, like, man, call ELO phone, like, see if he, like, heard he just got shot over there in the apartment. And so, that, yeah, that's one of the ones. How do you, how do you react to those? Of course you're gonna break you're gonna go crazy. He ain't on the phone, you're gonna go crazy, you're gonna probably break down, you're gonna get worried, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So and it rained hard today. Oh, so that, hard yeah, today. yeah, 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 yeah. You know that's see, I just I know you from the south. <laughs> <laughs> he crazy. Oh, I ain't lie, you say uh, you got served by someone you robbed before. Yeah. That was like recent this I stand on it. I he, stamped it. He didn't recognize you? Nah, for sure he knew what it is. You know, so you got some people just like that. I feel like the juice but if I was him, I would have never did it. But it's, it be like that sometimes when, like, when a person get fame and who I was at first. This ain't who I was at first. You, he might just be one of them mature people, like just. It was he was a young. Yeah. That's how I looked at it. You know what I'm saying? I was like, damn. You know what I'm saying? But he mutual friends with my brother, my day one man. You feel what I'm saying? Like they locked in. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's crazy. He probably brag about it. Man, you know money back. Yo, rob me back in the day. He, <laughs> he really about that. He spit. And then when my brother heard me, like when I, I went in the studio and rapped, and I said it, like he like, bro, come on, bro, you better put this <laughs> right after you. he pull up on his serving week. Good za. I walk in the studio, do it. Mm -hmm. Bro, come in there. He like, bro, real, bro, you better do it. I'm like, it is what it is. Yeah, that is kind of up though. <laughs> <laughs> what if he would have brought it up? Huh? What if he would have brought it up? You'd have just... It is what it is. <laughs> People at least give him something back. Like, right. Well, you know, that was a long time ago. Here's his money back. Well, we ain't talk about it. We, 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 <laughs> it's all love. We, we speak on it. Like. And we don't know if it was money either. We don't know what you what you got him for. <laughs> now I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, Listen, like, let's leave that all rip. I, I, I believe you. I love that record. That's a tough record. Appreciate it, bro. I like manicures, too. You get clear or buff. What you do? Uh, Clear. Okay. I get buff sometimes, like, if I'm in a rush. Because it's a process. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a you question. She should ask you. Get, <laughs> get manicures too. He rapping about it on the record. <laughs> Street <laughs> get man. He can get a manicure. Why can't he get a manicure? Well, and I think Machine too. Gun Kelly just came out with a line of nail polish. No, I don't believe that. Now. He did. Who? Machine Gun Kelly. For real. Thing. What made you start getting manicure? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, girl, I miss you. Exactly. With it's it's just like girls like that. They look at that when they look at you. They, they look do. at your teeth. They look at your fingers. They look at your shoes. They mm -hmm. see how you drip. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I just took heed to it. Now, before if a guy you has on? dirt under his fingernails, you think he's dirty because that means he's scratching himself and Stuff then he's like dirt. That, like. <laughs> That's what I think. I'm like, he's dirty because it's dirt under his fingernails. That's crazy. Do you, do you think people from the hood process pain differently? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like everybody go through pain, really. It don't matter, like, like the people that with the most money, they be stressing and going through stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really feel, I feel like everybody do a pain the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's get into a joint off the album. What you want to play, man? What we going to get into? A pain of a person. I like, this is one of my favorite joints. No okay. pain was a person. And, okay. like, I'm locked in on it. So this if pain was a person, gangster pain, out right now, go get it. All right. We appreciate you joining us this morning. Let's go. It's Money Bag Yo. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Listen up. This 
All the gossip. gossip. The rumor report. Gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The Breakfast Club. Yes, so uh, it is New Music Fridays, of course. You know what's so funny? They used to release new music on Tuesdays, but that has changed. So let's talk about some of the new music that is out today. Mm-hmm. Now, Young Thug has a new record out with the baby. It's called Liddy Snip. Oh, I think you got Liddy. that wrong, Envy. Yeah, it's called Liddy. It what got, the hell did you say? Liddy is, I guess when they sent it to me, it said Snip. So I'm thinking it's Liddy Snip, but I guess it's Liddy Snippet. Like Snippet of a song. Snippet Man, of a song. you really... You really give Hampton a bad bro, name, bro. Look how they sent it to me. I they don't give a damn. Snip. I don't give a damn, Ron Burgundy. There is no way in hell I would see Snippet and think that was the name of the they song. They didn't say Snippet. It said Liddy Snip. That's Liddy what they Snip. Said. Oh, but, yeah. Listen, you, you thought that was some new slang? You're like, boy, yeah, I'm I getting old. Know. I can't even keep up. No, I know what lit means, but Snip. But every song has the word Snip in it. So do you think that everybody's using the word Snip in their song title? Uh, no, it does. It just says her and Chris Brown, which we're about to get into right now. It says come through. Snip. I didn't read all that. <laughs> all right. Don't get you snip. Play it? Don't you get snippy with dramos, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right. You just do the damn job, okay? What's next? I'm not doing rumors after this anymore. <laughs> also, um. Y'all can't send me ish in the middle of the rumor package. Envy didn't mention that the Thug song is the deluxe of the YSL album. The deluxe has eight tracks. No, you didn't send me any, none of this. You're just telling me now. I'm not doing rumors after this. The next uh, song listen, is. Stop being snippy. No. <laughs> okay, you being snippy. I don't listen, care. um, that, yes, that, that, why, that Young Thug Baby song was from the uh, deluxe version of the. Slime said, language too. I said that already. Okay, what else we got? Let's 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 do a little nepotism right now. Okay, this is this is my niece. All right, Michaela. Is it a snip? She's trying to uh, <laughs> she's trying to have a life out here. Okay, <laughs> what's the name of this record? FTN. Mm-hmm. FTN that, snip. What's that mean, Dramos? Uh, how do I know? It's your niece. Oh, I, th- I thought you knew. I wanted you to say it. It's FTs and words. Oh. Okay. Try to set me up. No, thank you. I picked up the phone and called my mama. Mama said, girl, you don't need that drama. Let him go. Let him know that you can do bad on your own. Mama said, you don't need him. But mama, I love him. Mm. Mama said, you don't need him. But mama, I love him. Mama said, you don't need him. But mama, I love him. Mama, I love him. Okay. All right. Let the beat ride out a little bit more, but um, yes, it's that's a snip. That's, that's why. Yeah, that's, that's Michaela J. F. T. N. That's out Michaela? right now. Huh? Who hurt Michaela? That's a good question. Right? Boy, you might need to listen to her mama. <laughs> uh, and lastly, shout to our brother Nori. You know, Nori listens every morning. N O R E snip featuring uh, Khaled and Dream Doll. This is called Going Up Snip. You wanna catch me with my zipper down? Whoa! And every Whoa! Girl is dancing like a <laughs> now. Be in a different era and I'm Start that over again. Whoa, 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 whoa! That was whoa. a little bit more than the snip, Nori. <laughs> yeah, that was a paparazzi wow. want to catch you with your zipper down. Let's let, let's try this again. Paparazzi wanna catch me with my zipper down. And every girl is dancing like a stripper now. Be in a different era and I recognize. Had to unfollow you. You full of pesticides. Nowadays, life's about a caption. You only say f- me because you want to react. You can't catch me. God, because I roll so hard. No license. Just my metal Kumar. I want to call. Yeah, yeah, call. Yeah, yeah. Energy, I'm always okay. All right, Nori. N O R E Snip. N O R E S N I P. It's called Going Up Snip. <laughs> All right. Oh, and that was just some new music for your asses this morning on a Friday. We don't have no more snips? <laughs> huh? No, no more snips. Okay, okay. All right. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. That wasn't really a rumor report. That was more just, of a new music report. We had a new music report, but it's all basic. We call it rumor. Well, ye calls and, it her rumor report. And that's the problem. What? <laughs> that's the problem. When we have rumors, when I tell, you, no rumor, rumors, when I we, tell you rumor, you go, go ahead, girl. Because it's not me. a rumor. It's just something that's repeated off of a blog site, okay? And then we do new music, and we call it Rumor Report. Come on, guys. Can we produce this thing correctly for once? 
All right? And envy, stop reading everything that gets put in your face. Matter of <laughs> fact, I'm about to send you something right now, and All you right, better it read it verbatim. I'm, read it. Hold it on. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm Hopefully, you guys have a good Friday out there. I'm going to be in Orlando, by the way, this Friday, uh, well, tomorrow, talking about real estate. So if you guys want to get into real estate. <laughs> Don't do it, Envy. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> All right, Charlemagne. Do it again. <laughs> you don't want to read it? No. Okay. No. All right. <laughs> All right. This guy's crazy, dog. This guy's crazy. Who are you giving your donkey to, man? <laughs> oh, I just made you an offer on the text message. You don't want to. <laughs> We need Courtney Wilson and Shanita Jones to come to the front of the congregation. We'd like to have a word with them, please. All right. We'll mm-hmm. get to that next. Florida. Luck. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Dad, Stop Embarrassing Me is a new Netflix sitcom that follows a teenage daughter who comes to live with Brian, played by Jamie Foxx, who gets parental help from Pops, played by David Allen Greer, to hilariously tackle life together. Now streaming only on Netflix. Make sure you tell them to watch out for Florida, man. Florida, man. The craziest people in America come from the Bronx and all of Florida. Yes, you are a donkey. A Florida man attacked an ATM for a very strange reason. It gave him too much money. Florida man is arrested after deputies say he rigged the door to his home in an attempt to electrocute his pregnant wife. Police arrested an Orlando man for attacking a flamingo. It's the breakfast club, bitches. Donkey of the day. With Charlemagne the God. I don't know why y'all keep letting him get y'all like this. Well, Donkey of the Day for Friday, April 23rd, goes to Courtney Wilson and Shanita Jones of the great state of Florida. I've been telling y'all all all morning I don't want to discuss anything heavy today. Our collective peace has been disturbed all week. It is exhausting explaining to people why black folks have the right to live and exist in this country like everybody else. Okay, when I tell you I am drained, all I want to do this weekend is go to therapy today, indulge in some plant-based medicine, watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier and all of YouTube breakdowns about Falcon and the Winter Soldier and eat whatever the hell I want. That's all I want to do. So when I came in today and I said, I don't want anything but positive energy. I don't want nothing heavy. God placed a Florida story in my lap. What does your Uncle Shala always say about the great state of Florida? The craziest people in America come from the Bronx and all of Florida. And today's story further proves my point now. I grew up in an era where we always said it's no future in front. But then I also grew up in an era where folks said, fake it until you make it. So the message is confusing, right? Fake it until you make it. You know, uh, if you, you, you turn out to be what you pretend to be, I've, I've never really seen that work for anybody. Okay, because when you build something on a foundation of lies, it's not a stable foundation. Nothing can stand on a foundation of lies. If you were one of the three little pigs, okay, when you, when you, when you, when you fake it until you make it, your house is made of straw and sticks. All right? Big bad wolves blows, blow those down with ease. But when you live by the motto of there's no future in front and your house is made of bricks, strong, solid foundation, okay? Wolf can't just come and blow that down. Well, Courtney and Shanita didn't get the memo. Oh, they fronting, fronting. Like Pharrell featuring Jay-Z fronting. Okay, see, Courtney and Shanita got married and they invited family and friends to their 16,300 square foot mansion dream home and estate for their wedding. But it was one problem. Let's go to WTBG NBC Six for the report, please. The wedding of their dreams for one South Florida couple ended before it began. This wedding website for Courtney Wilson and Shanita Jones says the couple was scheduled to get married at the Wilson Estate in Southwest Ranches this past Saturday. But the nine bedroom, 13 bath, sprawling 16,000 square foot property belongs to someone else. When the Excuse wedding me? party showed up Saturday morning to set up, the homeowner called 911. I have people trespassing on my property and they keep harassing me. Uh, they say they're having a wedding here and it's God's uh, message. Homeowner Nathan Finkel asked police to tell them to leave. Davy police say the group left as soon as they were asked to go, so no charges were filed. The property is for sale for $5.7 million. Friends of the family say Wilson toured the estate over a year ago as if he was interested in buying it but never got permission for a wedding party. Wilson and Jones did in fact get married on Saturday but in a nearby park. What in the name of colonization? (laughs) 
claiming land that already belongs to somebody else. People are already here. Courtney and Shanita invited family and friends to their mansion that they even called the Wilson Estate. It got a bowling alley, swimming pool with a waterfall, hot tub, tennis courts, a gazebo, and an 800 foot ball. And it wasn't even their house. Not only was it not their house, they didn't even have permission to be there. I know you hear this story and you like, what the hell? I hear this story and I'm like, what the Florida? Do you understand the planning that goes into a wedding? I've been married for what, seven years now? I didn't want anything to do with the planning, but I watched my wife and the wedding planner put it together. And even though I had nothing to do with it, I know it was a lot. And location is important. Probably the most important thing. I mean, you can't have a wedding without a location, right? So why would you plan a whole wedding at a place that you're not even authorized to be at? Can we play the clip again? I really just want to hear the old man again. That's the part. Can we can we can we fast forward to that in some way? It's not uh, possible. No, we don't have the technology. Oh, okay. <laughs> we have this. Let me hear. Uh, they say they're having a wedding here, and it's God's uh, message. Okay, I got that. Mm -hmm. I want to hear him. That's mm -hmm. what I want to hear. That's all we got. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Was this even a real wedding? <laughs> if the location isn't real, then why should we assume the marriage license is? Hmm. Somebody diamond test the ring, please. The ring might not be real either. Other than you can't pretend forever, I have nothing else to say. See, you turn out to be what you pretend to be, unless you're from Florida. When you're from Florida, you can't even pretend to be normal. You can't even pretend to be sane. You can't even pretend to act like you are thou of good sense because, well, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, Florida, please, uh, Give Courtney Wilson and Shanita Jones the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons. Oh, now you are the donkey mm. of the day. Ooh, you are the donkey of the day. Yeehaw. <laughs> Colonization is at an all-time high. You you, you want to... um. You, you want to play a game? I was waiting for you to ask me. <laughs> I was really waiting for you to ask me. Well, I guess it's time to play a game of Guess What? What? Racing! Racing! All right, what's the clues? <laughs> okay, here are the clues. Courtney and Shanita Wilson. Shanita, okay. Planned a whole wedding, invited all their family and friends to their 16,300 square foot mansion that they didn't even own own didn't have permission to be there dj envy no i'm gonna start yes. with dramos let's do dramos okay. dj dramos why are you so excited <laughs> dj dramos guess what, what? race it is. is you see you trying to go to me first this feels like a setup uh so i think i know the answer to this one why what is that it? it feels like a setup it's florida keep in mind you got a lot of your people down there dramos I don't, what, what part of florida they say that he didn't say. Oh. Yeah. So what do you think it is, Dramos? I'm still going to stick for finance or uh, black. Wow. 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 Mm -hmm. Why do you think that, Dramos? <laughs> what was her name? Shanita. <laughs> Shanita. Shanita. And Carlos. It wasn't no damn Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why? Why do you think they were black, Shanita Dramos? and Carla? No, no it was Courtney. Co Courtney. Come yeah. on. Come on. I don't know. Come on, nothing. Did you say something about some gators too? He was wearing. That. I say nothing oh, about no gators. Like, wow! Wow! wow. Sorry, sorry. You racist <laughs> bastard! I wow. say nothing about no goddamn gators. We're not talking about Detroit. We're talking about Florida. Okay. Right. Ask me. Okay, DJ Envy. Yes, sir. Uh, Courtney and Shanita Wilson invited mm -hmm. family and friends to their mansion that had a bowling alley, swimming pool with a waterfall, hot tub, tennis courts, a gazebo, and an 800-foot bar. Sixteen thousand three hundred square feet. They had no permission to be there. It was not their estate. Guess what race it is? Now, uh, behind the scenes, you know, you said that they were wearing uh, white pants with no that. socks. That never happens. <laughs> oh, so I did say that. I did say see, that. because you said that, mm -hmm. I have to go with Puerto Rican. That's yeah, racist. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I want both of you to know that you both are wrong. Mm, okay, incorrect. All right. Courtney and Shanita are not Puerto Rican, nor are they black. They are niggers. <laughs> All right. Florida niggers. Okay. All right. All right. It's the difference, ladies and gentlemen. All right. All right. Well, thank you for that donkey of the day. Mm -hmm. Now, 
when we come back, Moneybag Yo was here this morning, and uh, he has a line in one of his songs talking about his manicures, and he said this. I like manicures too. You get clear or buff. What you do? Uh, <laughs> oh, <What? clear? laughs> okay. Well, I get buff sometimes, like if I'm in a rush. What made you start getting manicures? It's just like girls liked it. They look at it when they look at you. They, they look do. at your teeth. They look at your fingers. They look at your shoes. They mm -hmm. see how you drip. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just took heed to it. Now, before if a guy you has on? dirt under his fingernails, you think he's dirty because that means he's scratching himself and Stuff then like dirt. That, like. <laughs> That's what I think. I'm like he's dirty because it's dirt under his fingernails. I love it. You know what I mean? I I, I, I listened to the new album, um, A Gangsta's Pain, and Moneybag Yo is absolutely rapping about manicures on there. As a person who gets manicures and pedicures, I absolutely love it. I think men should groom themselves in this way. All right. Well, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Ladies, when you see a man or you see a significant other, what is the first thing that you see on somebody? And fellas, the same. When you're looking at your significant other or checking out somebody out there, what's the first thing that you see or you look for and, when and, you're looking at that person? And, and Angela, you said something that I never noticed. I didn't know that uh, when women see dirt under your fingernails, they think that it's you that's dirty because mm. you're scratching the back of your neck or scratching yourself. So you got dirt under your fingernails from the dirt off your skin. I didn't know that. Me neither. But all right, well, let's talk about it. 800-585-1051. Because it could be Beijing, right? <clears throat> it don't always got to be dirt on the nails. Envy? It could be Beijing, right? Like if you got a bunch of Beijing in your beard <laughs> and you got the dye all in your hair. If you scratch your beard or scratch the back of your neck, it can get black stuff under your nails. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't use Beijing. But uh, I don't know. But you know what? Let, <laughs> um, let me shout out to uh, Kevin Hart. What up, Kev? Oh uh, Diddy. Ross. Rose. Just say, the, just, just say the Black Ink Crew. That's what y'all like. Yo, shut up, man. Marvel's, Marvel's doing a comic called The Black Ink Crew based off all of y'all. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Pick up the phone, baby. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, uh, Charlemagne and Moneybag Yo is having a bromance conversation about their nails. Early, let's hear it. I like manicures too. You get clear or buff? What you do? Uh, clear. Okay. I get buff sometimes, like if I'm in a rush. What made you start getting manicures? It's just like girls like it. They look at it when they look at you. They, they look do. at your teeth. They look at your fingers. They look at your shoes. They mm -hmm. see how you drip. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just took heed to it. Now, before if a guy you has gone? dirt under his fingernails, you think he's dirty because that means he's scratching himself and Stuff then like dirt. That, like. <laughs> That's what I think. I'm like he's dirty because it's dirt under his fingernails. I can't remember what song it is right now off of Gangsta's Pain, but he he talks about um. You know, getting manicures. I don't see a problem with it. I think manicures are dope. I think men need to take care of themselves in every aspect, uh, physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. Nails are very important. I agree. You I don't agree get your you nails done? Well. Absolutely. I don't do the clear, though. I get the buff. I do the clear. Yeah, I don't do the clear. I get the buff. I like the buff. I like the shininess of it. The clear feels a bit too much. Nah, I do the clear, too. All right, but we're asking 800-585-1051. What's the first thing you see when you're interested in a person? Is it their nails? Is it their teeth? Is it, you know, the way they dress? Let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? Marquette. Hey, Marquette. Hey, Marquette. Hey. So? We're asking what's the first thing you notice when, you, when you're checking out somebody? His sneakers. His sneakers? See, that's what's wrong with y'all. You don't care nothing about his hygiene. You don't care nothing about his health. You know what I mean? You should be looking at his eyes to see if he got a little yellow in his eyeballs. When you look at the sneakers, you can tell a lot about the hygiene because if you got clean sneakers, you the clean suit. Now that's a lie. You know good and well these brothers out here will take better care of their shoes than they do their own body. That is a fact. You know that. That's true sometimes. So how old are you? Uh, 21. I can't wait till you grow up. See, that's why. I, I'm not even mad at you. <laughs> that's what you went to right now. You know what it I'm is. saying? What's your favorite sneakers? What do you like? What, what turns you on? I Jesus. like Jordan. Oh, you like Jordans? Okay. Oh, so you like old niggas. What? <laughs> MB, what part of Orlando are you going to be in? I mean, like, where are you going to be at? You posted on your page for the real estate? Yeah, I'm going to be in um the name of the spot. I'll tell you right now. Don't uh, wear Jordans, Envy. She's going to be checking you out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm married, yeah. ma'am. I'm married, ma'am. It's actually going to be at the Orange County Convention Center. So I'm going to be there Saturday. Uh, or, like like 10 a.m. And we're just going to be breaking down real estate. Trying to, I'm trying to just encourage people to invest in real estate, invest in everything. But, you know, real estate is something that I did well on. And I just try to break down how I make money through real estate, how my partner sees and makes money through real estate. And we bring everybody there to help you with that. And I think there's like 
20 seats left so ain't, no need, there. ain't no need for you to come because you're gonna miss your blessings because you're gonna be too busy looking for a man in jordan's <laughs> and gonna miss the person that probably got all the property man, I'm- I'm no, I'm looking to learn about real estate. That's what I'm looking for. Yes, ma'am. All right, mama. See you there on Saturday. Hello, who's this? What up? This is Andrew. Andrew. Hey, what's up, bro? What's what, going on? What's, <laughs> what's up? What's the first thing you see when you're checking out a guy? <laughs> what you looking at? Yo, I'm not like you. I don't check out dudes, my guy. <laughs> like who? Wow, Envy, you just going to let him insult you in sexuality like that? <laughs> I was talking to you like that, not me. Which one of us you talking to now? Because we both gay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't judge. There ain't nothing wrong with that, but I don't be looking at dudes like that. But okay. If I'm scoping out a girl, first thing I'm looking at is the feet. Yo, the feet gotta be on point, or else it's a wrap. Why are these girls just walking around barefoot? Yo, it's summertime. They be on flip flops, whatever, you know. True, true. No, but that's okay. important. I agree with that. Feet are very important. You gotta be done right. On a man too, though. Man, like the men what? like to throw on slides and stuff. <laughs> That, is that what you checking out with men's feet? So no, I'm just do? telling men they got to have their feet on point. I get manicures and pedicures once a month, bro, and I enjoy it. All right. Well, thank you. 800-585-1051. <laughs> thank you for what? I'm what talking to the guy that was on the phone. Getting pedicures and manicures? <laughs> the guy that was on the phone. Right. Oh. That, Goodness, yo, you kinky. I thought morning. you was checking me going. out. I was like, thank you. Like, this ain't for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> you just said you gay, though. I said we gay. <laughs> That's what I said. I said we both gay. <laughs> You know what? 800-585-1051. We're asking, what's the first thing you check out when you see somebody you're interested in? Call us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. I know it now. 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 That you know me. You know Call me. Add your opinion to The Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you just joined us, we're talking about um, money bag, yo. He stopped through earlier today, and this is what he said. I like manicures, too. You get clear or buff? What you do? Uh, Clear. Okay. I get buff sometimes, like if I'm in a rush. What made you start getting manicures? It's just like girls like it. They look at it when they look at you. They, they look do. at your teeth. They look at your fingers. They look at your shoes. They mm-hmm. see how you drip. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I just took heed to it. Now, before if a guy you has gone? dirt under his fingernails, you think he's dirty because that means he's scratching himself and Stuff then like dirt. That, like. <laughs> that's what I think. I'm like, he's dirty because it's dirt under his fingernails. Yeah, that's off a bar that he spits on the new album, Against His Pain. I can't. Could somebody bring me the song. I can't remember the name of the song right now. But yes, I think that manicures are important. I get manicures and pedicures all the time. That is part of my self care routine i think that uh men we got to start taking care of ourselves physically mentally spiritually and emotionally and you got to pay attention to the details like the nails all right well let's go to the phone lines hello who's this it's tisha from texas hi hey, hey tisha, tisha from texas Texas. <laughs> okay so the first thing i noticed on a guy of course shoes and stuff but his fingernails if they're long and dirty that's no because you know that foreplay you gotta put your hand in your pants. It's dirty. Mm. Yeah. Ugh. Isn't that nasty? Because you can get all kind of infections. You don't even have to have sex to get an infection. Yeah, that sounds uh-huh. gross. And Angela Yee <laughs> said something. And tell me if this is true. Angela Yee said that when a guy has dirty fingernails, she assumes that he's dirty because he might be scratching himself or scratching the back of his neck, and that's where the dirt's coming from. You, you think that's true? Scratching his tail, his Ugh. butt. I mean, just everything. Just <laughs> yuck. And you don't even have to get a manicure to have nice hands. So just do that, you know, every now and again. Just pick your nails out, wash your hands, and you're good. But nasty, long nails are, are, are no no. So these guys running around the long nails thinking that's cool. Y'all play that, dude. No, I agree with you. And I don't even know how guys can live like that. Like, I don't know how guys can walk around knowing they got them long, nasty fingernails. Like, yuck. And I hate when somebody gives you a pound and they got the long nails and the nails damn near cut your skin. That's disgusting. I start. Oh, Wolverine ass nigga. Let me tell you something. The name of the song is um, I Believe You featuring uh, Trip Star from Moneybag Yo's album where he, where he spits the manicure line. Gotcha. Hello, who's this? Hey, how you doing? This is Steven with from Atlanta. Hey, hey what's Steven. up, bro? What's the first thing you um look at when you're checking out, a, you know? A man? I met a- uh, man, I, I, I am not, I am not Charlamagne the God. Oh. What is, yo, listen, y'all ain't gonna make me that uh, adjective for gay, okay? <laughs> right. Sounds about right. Go ahead, bro. All right, man, for me, it's, it's the hair, man. I remember when yeah. I was a kid and how I was in high school, I had a girlfriend, she came to a barbecue, had a comb in her hair. My mom talked about her so bad, man, she got dumped two, two weeks later. So wow. It has to be the hair, man. Women got to keep their hair up. 
So what do you mean? What do you mean she had a comb in her hair? Like she needed her hair done? No, nah, she had a she had like a hair press, but she was combing it out. And she brought the comb and had a comb stuck in her hair, like a rat tail comb, you know, picking the hair there. And my mom saw that and my mom was like, ah. What's wrong with that? Yeah, yeah. Black people walking around with the pics in our hair when we had afros and all kind of stuff. What's wrong with that? Uh, shit, I'm African. You don't leave the house until you make sure you look good. Oh, got you, got <laughs> you, got you. All right. All right. Thank you, brother. Hello. Who's this? This is Janae. Hey, Janae. We're asking, what's the first thing you you see when you're checking out somebody? I look for their smile first. Your smile. Because you're looking at their yeah. teeth. Yeah, but I don't like the fake teeth. <laughs> you don't, oh, you don't like fake teeth? No. I think I'm gonna tell you why I appreciate fake teeth because that means that a person cares that much about their dental hygiene. You know, some people get their teeth clean, but some people be having raggy ass mouths. So they decided to invest in some teeth. I think teeth is a good investment. They make yeah, I'm, big I'm not mad at the teeth either. I agree with that. I don't like I don't like the piano keys. Yeah, so yeah. maybe if they look natural, but the big teeth I can't take. But if people can't like they can't figure out like you gotta. It's not like you could try teeth and then take them back out and try later. You just gotta you know cross your fingers and hope that they don't look like chicklets. The dentists have to do better. Yeah, somebody told me that they put them in your mouth first big and then they shave them down later. I don't know how true that is. Oh, uh, and then I well the next thing I look at is their uh, nails because you know you gotta check the finger to make sure they're not married. Oh, um, I mean I could just take my ring off though. I mean that's true, but a lot of guys uh, keep them on. When yeah, that yeah, because that's cheating. You take the ring off, bro. That's cheating. But you know what? Even with the smile, how do you see the smile with the mask? Because everybody got a mask on now. <laughs> that's what makes it so hard these days. I don't know. Mm. I wonder if there's a lot of mask fishing going on. Mm. I think so. I think so. Nowadays, guys will look and be like, oh, hey, beautiful. I'm like, how do you know I'm beautiful? <laughs> 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 You're right. Well, thank you, mama. All right. Bye. And what's the moral to the story? The moral of the story is take care of yourself, brothers. I don't care, man. You know what I mean? All that stuff that y'all say is feminine. Yo, women know how to take care of themselves. Okay, so we need to follow suit. Get your nails, you know, get the manicures, get the pedicures. Mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, take care of yourself. Pay attention to the details, man. All right. Now, we got rumors on the way. What are we talking about? I don't know. Me neither. But we're going to make, make it good when we come back. We so don't move. It. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. To the rumors, let's talk Drake. This is the rumor report with Angela Yee. Rumor has it. Rumor, 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 rumor. On the Breakfast Club. Yeah, so listen up. Nah, nah, Ramos, nah, you know better. Nah, 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 nah. Whenever Drake is mentioned, you know what to hit. Come on. Well, Drake is his favorite artist. Well, this is probably him. why maybe Dramos is upset about this. So a new video of Drake in the gym with his friends is uh, sparking a lot of interest in a lot of people. They believe that Drake is really not working out, that he really went and got maybe a BBL or he got some surgery. And that is the reason why he has those muscles and six pack. And I will be honest with you. all That's just some low energy hate. Mm -hmm. Why would you even repeat that story? Where did you get this from? Envy? Where is this? Cite your sources. Dan gave it to me. Dan, cite your sources. What? Hip Hop DX. Hip Hop DX? Okay. Well, all right. <laughs> I don't even know. How do you even <laughs> prove something like this? Who cares? I don't even know. It just sounds stupid. God, if ladies, ladies out here getting uh, BBLs and doing stuff to their body, if that man want to do that, that's his prerogative. Drake's not getting no damn BBL. He's, the brother's working out, man. Light skinned guys can work out too, man. All right? Hey. Nah, you got titties. Shut up. <laughs> you definitely need some surgery. Shut up. Now, Fabio Foreign was arrested, uh, you can't say that, was arrested what? with a loaded gun with missing serial numbers. Now, this is allegedly what happened. They believe that uh, he was walking into a city bank. He left his bins outside in a no parking zone. And they said uh, a cop came up to him and asked for his uh, license. They said that his car was parked in a no stopping zone. They said Fabio just simply ignored and just walked away. They said the officer began to follow him and they said Fabio J walked across the street and ignored him. And they chased him down until the 25 caliber handgun fell out of his waistband. They said the serial number on the gun had been reportedly scrubbed off and he was arrested. Pivio Foreign is lucky that he's alive this morning. And I don't even know why y'all play with police officers in that way. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know why you would play with a police officer in that way in this climate. I really, I really truly don't. 
Well, you know, you know what, and and this is gonna sound so crazy. Sometimes it feels like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, right? You you, walk, you run to the store and you just want to go. Let's say you just want to go to the ATM. Yeah. But you know, you in in New York and New Jersey, you're not legally allowed to carry the handguns. But mm. the criminals don't care about that. And you don't so have now, your security, and you're a rapper, and you he's know just running to the you. store. He just want to maybe just went to the store to go get some milk or something. He went to go get to the ATM, but now he has to protect himself because he is a rapper, right? And now um, he gets he gets pulled over for non stopping. Now he gets to jail and, and he probably got to do two three years in prison because of that, no, which is foul. Sadly, police don't know that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's sad because he I, I don't he didn't have an intention to hurt anybody. He probably was just protecting himself while he ran to the store and ran into the ATM. I don't I don't know. Mm. I just think it's I mean I get it, but you know when you're when you're a rapper and you're on that level and you're on that status, you know you just can't run to the store. Sadly. You got to take proper precautions at all times because you know mm -hmm. it's not legal for you to carry a firearm. Right. You know, so you're going to have to have somebody with you yeah. or just live someplace where you feel more comfortable than run to the store without a pistol, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And lastly, Floyd Mayweather looks like that fight is going to happen him and Logan Paul. It's going to happen June 6th in Miami. Are you guys excited for this? Do you want to see it? Nope. What are your thoughts? Mm -mm. Don't care. No? Nope. You don't want to see that? I want to see it. Yeah, because you love Floyd Mayweather. I do. You want to hug him. You want to hug him shirtless. From the back. <laughs> Yo, what is wrong with y'all, man? <laughs> you really do love Floyd. You're one of them guys that have like an obsession with Floyd Mayweather. I don't have right? an obsession with Floyd. I think he's one of the, the greatest boxers of all time. So he I is. like to see him fight. So what's wrong with that? Same no, thing with I, Michael Jordan. I like to see Michael Jordan play regardless. I like to see no, LeBron play. Like, no, these you are don't. People no, 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 no. You like to see Michael Jordan and LeBron play real competition. You like to see Michael Jordan and LeBron play mm. real basketball players. I don't want to see Floyd Mayweather as great a boxer as he is in the ring with Logan Paul. What has Logan Paul done to deserve to be in the ring with Floyd Mayweather? It's real boxers that would kill for that opportunity. That's a real big payday that Logan Paul is going to get. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not excited to see Floyd Mayweather Floyd, versus Floyd Logan is Paul. retired. He proved himself now. Now, you know, these are these little young boys want to talk a little mouth. Okay, I'll pop you in your oh, lip for please. that. I don't have Did no it, problem with that. Didn't he lose to KSI, though? Who is KSI? That's, KSI. Like one, of them K -pop That's one of the other YouTubers. Like when they first started boxing, Logan Paul fought him. I don't I watch that lost. stuff. I don't know nothing about this. Me neither. All right. I take your word for it, Dramos. You the one. You, you know that's your world. I don't yeah. know about no KSI. I thought that was a K-pop group. Why the K-pop guys fighting? No, he's a uh, YouTuber and rapper, I think. KSI. Oh no, KSI fought Jake Paul. No, no, it was Logan Paul and know. Jake Paul okay, fought some other guys. That's why I don't be going Stay to chase waterfalls. Jake I, Paul's the one that's been that knocked out Nate Robinson. That, that's why I don't chase waterfalls. I stick right, to the um, you know rivers and lakes that I'm used to. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, that is your rumor report all right shout to revolt we'll see you guys tomorrow and let me shout out to everybody yes i'm heading out to orlando today i'm you know i'm doing my seminar i really try to push pm encourage people to own some type of property whether it's an investment property whether it's your own property to own some type of land you know uh money is cheap right now interest rates are low and if you could get a good deal right now now is the time to do it so we're gonna be in orlando tomorrow talking about real estate breaking it down i think there's 20 seats left so i can't wait to see you guys all right so let's get into the mix. Today's mix is all about Shock G, DMX, and Black Rock. All right? So let me know what you want to hear. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Our Audible pick of the day is Half Light, a fantastic Atlanta-based story about sisterhood and love from best-selling author Tyeri Jones. Your first 30 days of Audible Plus are free. Sign up at audible.com slash breakfast club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building who fly, who fights uh, this week, Edgar Belongo. Morning, brother. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Charlamagne, Edgar. What up, baby? What's up, brother? I knock you out, man. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying that because you over Zoom. That's all. I would <laughs> no, never no, say yeah. that if you was here. <laughs> so you got a fight. You got a fight coming up this weekend, this Saturday. Um, you're 16 and 0. What makes this boxer different that you're fighting, if if, if anything at all? I mean, uh, you know, obviously, the, you know, we're going to have his, his fans now attending. So that's a good thing. You know, last year I fought three fights with no fans. I was in Vegas at the MGM Grand in the bubble and everything. So now I got fans. The arena sold out. So it was a big thing for us. You know, Edgar, one of the uh, one of our uh, guys here that's a part of the team. He's he's a Latino, and he said that you're the best representation for Latino boxers since Miguel Cotto. Do you, do, Puerto, Puerto Rican, Rican, I'm sorry, Puerto Rican boxers since Miguel Cotto. Do you do you feel that kind of pressure to represent? Yeah, um, I mean, there's no pressure for me. You know, like 
for me, I, I like pressure because, you know, I perform better under pressure, you know, so all that tension, all the, all the cameras and everything, I love it. You know, I've been wanting this opportunity since I was a, as, a, as I was a kid, you know, since I was eight years old, watching them come up and, and, and become stars. And now I'm in that situation now, and it's just it's just amazing. Does anybody ever say slow down? Because your fights are so fast. So I, I just remember almost being like Tyson fights where people pay for a fight, they sit down, and when they put their head down to get their popcorn or their food, fight's over. And every fight that you fought, you knocked the guy out in the first round. So do anybody ever tell you to slow down, or they just say, do you? Yeah, you know, you got some people like, you know, they're like, yo, you know, we pay X amount of dollars to go watch you fight. You know, at least make it to the second or third round. We want to enjoy the night, you know. But um, I tell them, you know, we don't get paid overtime. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you know, I, if I could get them out, I'd get them out of there. You know, obviously, you know, the first round knockout, it brought me to this point, you know, and, and, and to the point where, you know, I have big, 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 big time celebrities, you know, on my phone now and, and people who's backing me up. Does it get overwhelming? Like, you know, you say big-time celebrities. Do, 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 is it hard to stay focused now because you got celebrities calling and everybody wanting favors? And I remember seeing you, you know, when you came to the office year a year ago, it wasn't as big, but now I'm seeing every celebrity calling and every athlete calling. Is it overwhelming now? Do you know, like, nah, I can't answer my phone. I got to stay focused? Nah, yeah, you know, for me, it's like, I know, I know, you know, the hard work comes first and the discipline. You know, a lot of people, like, you know, they get caught off, off track you know, because of the fame and, and everything. And I know it's going to get worse, but, um, you know, that's why you, you're supposed to have a strong team. You know, and I got my father, I got my mom, I got the coaches, you know, I got my management that, that keep me in line for everything, you know, um, because it comes fast. And sometimes a lot of a lot of young young fighters and, and young talent like myself, you know, tend to fall off. But with me, you know, you just got to have a strong, for me, you just got to have a strong foundation. You know, and that's the team that that keeps you online and focused. Will, will you be disappointed if you don't get your 17th uh, straight knockout? Um, nah. You know, uh, for me, it's like I work hard for every fight. You know, I, I make sure that you know we spar and we get in them rounds. And you know, if I'm not getting the rounds in the gym, I mean, in a, in a fight, I'm getting them in the gym. You know, so for that, you know, we just prepping for the bigger dogs. You know, I, I want the top dogs. You know, you know, I want Canelo. I want these type of fights in the, in the future. You know that's 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 on the, that's near, that's coming, maybe next year. So we just preparing for all those guys. Canelo next year. You ready for that, Edgar? I mean, you know, if, if the opportunity presents itself and everything is right, you know, the money's right. Um, yeah, why not? You, you know, know, um, but you, you know, even with the knockout, like if you, you know, when your mindset is okay, I got to get this knockout. Can't doesn't that leave you a little more vulnerable instead of just going in there to box? Now, yeah, always um, when when I'm when I'm going in there, you know, I go in there with with a strong mind. You know, I use my jab. You know, I'm 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 very poised, so I don't I don't look for the knockout. I let the knockout come to me. If the, if I see the knockout, if I hurt the guy, I'm getting him out of there. You know, there's no reason for me to have a guy that's that's seen me six times in the ring. You know, last. So for me, it's like as soon as I hurt him and I see he's hurt and he's not supposed to be in there with me, I can get him out. All right, well, shout to Edgar Belongo for joining us. I'm actually going to be in Orlando for my real estate seminar this weekend, so I can't wait to see you guys. Now, um, Charlamagne, you got a positive note? Yeah, but first, man, I got to salute uh, all my peoples at Audible. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I need everybody to go check out We've Got Answers. Thank you to everybody that's downloaded We've Got Answers thus far. You know, it's, it's a special project. It's a passion project for me, you know, because we're having honest dialogue about race, you know, for white people who got questions, for black people who don't want to appear racist or bigoted. You know, if you're a black person who's tired of educating your white friends about racism, this one was made for everybody. You know what I'm saying? I put together, like, this brilliant black brain trust uh, of black spurts like my sister amanda seal says and they speak on a bunch of different topics right so they talk about defunding the police and like there's been this controversy about what exactly does that mean and you know tamika mallory breaks that down greatly effortlessly on we've got answers you know what i mean actually we're gonna play a little clip of it the defund police movement is not about abolishing police departments and law enforcement in America. It is about creating balance. So drop on the clues bombs with Tamika Mallory. And, and she has a book coming out uh, called State of Emergency on May 11th via Black Privilege, Simon & Schuster Publishing. But you can pre-order that now. But, you know, thank you to everybody who's downloaded uh, We've Got Answers and everybody who's listened to We've Got Answers on 
Audible, okay? It's a safe space for unsafe conversation. Just go to audible.com slash see to God. It's free if you got an Audible membership. Well, leave us on a positive note now. Oh, and the positive note is simply this, man. Courage is the most important of all the virtues because without courage, you can't practice any other virtue consistently. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?